Hello everyone, Karnasa here and welcome to something a little bit different. So I've not been able to get Kerbal Gets Real done for this weekend. I did want to release an RO video though, so if the title doesn't give it away, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be attempting to land a Falcon 9 on the moon. So obviously I am working in the vehicle assembly building right now, working on the Falcon 9, said Falcon 9 that we are going to attempt to land. The mod that I used for the parts for this Falcon 9 is a mod called Tundra Exploration. And it's a good SpaceX mod. It includes Starship, it has RO configs as well, which is obviously really nice. And yeah, it's, it's good. But I have seen a comment on one of my other videos linking me to another SpaceX mod called KK SpaceX. And some of the parts from that look a little bit better. I kind of wish I'd have seen that before starting this video. I, I mean, I'm keen, I, I like the Falcon 9 that I have designed. The only issue is the landing legs do look a little bit stockish and I would rather them kind of fit the aesthetic more. And I think with KK SpaceX, there are a few nicer decals as well that I could have used, but oh well, I, I didn't have that. So we are stuck with this. It looks like a Falcon 9. You can definitely tell it's a Falcon 9. So anyway, I have been working on the Translunar injection stage, which is what we've got there. That is going to be not just our TLI, it is also going to capture us in a low lunar orbit, and then we're going to do the final landing with the Falcon 9 first stage. So you can see we do have 4,050 meters per second in that TLI stage. That's probably going to be enough to actually get us over to Mars. So if people would be interested in a future video, I may try and send this to Mars and actually land a Falcon 9 on Mars. Leave a comment if you would like to see that. And if that gets a lot of interest, then I will definitely consider doing something like that because it would be it'd be something else silly to do, silly and funny to do. So. Now that we have actually designed our Falcon 9 payload, if you can even really call the Falcon 9 a payload, it's a launch vehicle in itself, so it's a, it's a little bit strange, a little bit bizarre calling the Falcon 9 a payload, but I, I guess that's what it is. It's what we're going to be trying to land on the moon anyway. Anyway, yes, I digress. It's time to actually work on our launch vehicle, our launch vehicle that is going to get this into low Earth orbit. Now, the Falcon 9 and the TLI stage together weigh about 1,100 tons. So it's a it's a bit of a chunky boy. It is it is quite heavy. We are going to need a very large launch vehicle to actually get this to space. So I have turned to one of my all time favorite mods for realism overhaul, and that would be CH4 which is the Changing History mod. Great mod, absolutely fantastic mod. I'll put a link to that in the description. And yeah, some of the engines, <laughs> well, the main reason why I'm using it is for the ludicrously powerful engines. You can see there we have seven RL 1200s. They are the most powerful engine in the game that you can get for Realism Overhaul as far as I'm aware at the moment. They have, I think, over 12,000 kilonewtons of thrust, so they are very powerful. They are, well, like, <laughs> yes, like the F1s and then some more. But speaking of the F1s, we're not actually going to be able to get to orbit with this. You can see we've still only got a thrust to weight ratio of 0.99, despite the fact that we have seven of those most powerful engines in the game on our first stage. So what am I going to do? We're going to strap more boosters on. It wouldn't be KSP if we didn't do more boosters. So we have essentially got or Saturn 1C boosters that we are going to strap on. And well, they're not even Saturn 1Cs because we're using the F1B engines rather than the F1s. So they're even more powerful than the first stage of the Saturn V rocket. <laughs> so these boosters are probably, well, they are, they are very big boosters, very, very big boosters indeed. So big that actually that just caused my game to crash right there. So instead of designing those on the actual launch vehicle, what I decided to do was to create an entirely new craft file for those boosters. It would make it a little bit easier when it came to symmetry, rather than having to place five individual F1B engines on those boosters. It meant that I could just place one in the middle and then use symmetry to place another four around it, exactly like I have just done there. So talking of symmetry, I currently do not have editor extensions redux in 
installed on this install. So this is a fresh RORP1 install. I will talk a little bit more about that later on, but unfortunately it does mean that I don't have some of the mods that I have come to know and love. And it meant that placing these boosters, once they were a sub-assembly, well, it was a little bit more difficult than it would have been had I had that mod. It was a little bit frustrating, but I did eventually get round to doing it. And with those boosters placed on, that actually is pretty much our launch vehicle completely built. The only thing that needs doing now is to attach some separation motors onto those boosters. I feel like I've said boosters about a hundred times in the last minute <laughs> on those boosters so that we can get them clear of our core stage, our Mahusiv core stage. That core stage is actually 15 meters in diameter. I did want to create a modular launch pad for this because, you know, they look really nice. They really tire build together. They kind of really finish the rocket. But unfortunately, because that core diameter was 15 meters and those boosters are 10 meters in diameter, there isn't a launch stand big enough for this. You can see I'm trying to play around with one now. And yeah, I did realize that <laughs> it wasn't big enough. So unfortunately, I did have to go in and just use the standard generic launch clamps. But with that, that is actually our rocket fully built. So now it is time to actually launch our Falcon 9 to the moon. We are going to hopefully attempt to land on the lunar surface. And well, <laughs> just be really thankful that I've sped this up to four times speed in post-processing. So I didn't want to physical time warp through this launch because when you physical time warp, it does make the engine plumes look all kind of janky and all kind of weird and horrible. So. I had to sit here for about 30 minutes waiting for this vehicle to launch. Yeah, it took a really long time. I think the clock, the mission clock said that we were in space by the time we hit about 12 minutes. But of course, we are yellow clocking the entire way up. And luckily, uh, well, <laughs> I am using MechJeb Prime Vector Guidance to get us into orbit, and it did mean that I could go away. I went away, I think I made myself a cup of tea, I got myself some digestive biscuits and some rich teas, and I was just sat there with my cup of tea, dipping my biscuits in my tea, you know, very standard, generic <laughs> UK stuff to do, and it meant that I could just sit and watch this go up to orbit, and I, I didn't have to pay attention to it the entire time, which was really nice. So I did mention earlier on that I am running a new install of RO and RP1 and this is for my new series that I will be doing very shortly. But first, actually, I want to talk about the install. So this is running on KSP 1.10.1 and that is rather nice because it actually makes things run a lot smoother. So in Kerbal Gets Real, I am very lucky if at any point I get above 15 frames per second. And this launch, despite being a rather large launch vehicle, it never dropped below, I think, 24 frames per second. So I am getting a lot better frames. I'm still yellow clocking because this thing is monstrously big. So, that, so that's why I'm still yellow clocking, but the frames are gorgeous and it is so nice to play on a smoother version of KSP. So to actually get the 1.10 install, it is mostly the same as doing a 1.8. There are just a few little things that you have to change. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do an install video on that like I did with 1.8. If people are interested in that, I probably could put one together, but I don't know, it's, it's very similar and there's not really that many extra, extra added steps. So it just seems a little bit pointless doing an entire video on that, but I'm not sure if, if people are interested in that, if people want to see that, I will definitely put one together. So we are on our way to orbit now. We did separate those boosters, they went off without a hitch. Everything went rather swimmingly. And yeah, no, we're just on our way to orbit. So obviously this is, this is an install for the next RORP1 series that I am going to be doing. And I've not come up with a name for that series yet. I've not even come up for a name for the space agency that I'm going to be running. I have a few ideas that I'm toying about in my head and some of them I much prefer to others. And one thing I was going to ask, if people have any recommendations for a name for the next space agency, if you could leave those in the comments and then what we'll do is we will go over to the voting section on the Discord and we will actually put it to a vote. So the next agency in the next series will be put up to a vote on the Discord. I will include my own suggestions in there. 
But if anyone else has any suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments. So the premise of the next series is I'm going to be starting in around the 1980s, around the 1980s, around 1980, I think, because that's roughly where I'm getting to by the time that Kerbal Gets Real is going to be finished. And what I'm going to do is I am actually going to run with all of the technology that I have unlocked in Kerbal Gets Real, but it is going to be an RP1 save. And I'm going to finish the contracts that I need to have finished to actually start doing proper contracts. And then what I'm going to do is it's going to basically be like the start of a career again, but with a lot better technology and not just a lot better technology, probably actually every technology in the game. So where I am in Kerbal Gets Real at the moment, I have actually unlocked every single tech node. Well, every single tech node that does actually have a piece or a part in it. I haven't researched them fully yet. What I have done is I have gone into the R&D building and I have purchased them using my science points, but some of them I don't think I have quite unlocked because obviously with Kerbal Construction time, you do need to wait for things to be researched. So what I do need to do is I need to decide what I'm going to do with those last technologies when I actually kind of switch my saves across. But it's going to be exciting and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing all things kind of like first launches and it'll be it'll be a lot quicker to get into orbit if not getting into orbit on our first try. I think I probably will get into orbit on our first try and I think what I probably will do is I will kick off the series with a live stream and it will be just designing our first kind of early launch vehicles, and I say early launch vehicles, there's a good chance that the launch vehicles that I designed right at the start of the series are going to be the launch vehicles that we use throughout the entirety of it, because it saves money, it saves money on tooling, and because we've unlocked all of the technology, well, we're not really going to be unlocking any better engines, so we are going to be spoiled for choice at the start of that series. But there we go, any second now, and we have, well made our way into orbit with a Falcon 9 and our translunar injection stage. So it was actually quite an easy launch. It, well, I mean, I left MechJeb to do all of it, but <laughs> it, it was it was easy enough. Nothing, nothing went wrong. So obviously what we're going to be doing is we are going to be plotting our maneuver over to the moon, which is very simple to do. Just create a maneuver node, raise your apogee until it intersects with the moon's orbit, and then grab that maneuver node and just wiggle it around the Earth a bit until you find that all-important intersect. So Ah, you get a little bit of a tutorial on how to make a maneuver node to the moon. I'm sure most people that watch this channel know how to do that anyway, but if you didn't know, that's <laughs> well, that's how I go around making maneuver nodes to go to the moon if I don't use MechJeb to do it for me. I I mean I do usually get MechJeb to do it for me because it's just the click of a button. But sometimes, sometimes when I'm feeling not particularly lazy, I do enjoy creating my maneuver nodes myself. But you can see we have actually lit up those five HD3 engines on our way over to the moon. Oh, those, those HD3s, obviously I have updated my RO engines. So we have got a lot nicer texture for those HD3s. They have been modeled to look more like the rest of the RO engines rather than the kind of stockish counterparts that they used to look like, and they look so much better. So I am very excited to be using those for the foreseeable future as well. So what I want to talk about now whilst we perform this quite long translunar injection, so I have actually included the entire launch and all of the maneuvers for this, which I wouldn't usually do, but I thought as this is just one specific mission, I probably should show it all, even if it is sped up to four times speed in post-processing, but you know, I thought I'd show it all. But anyway, yes, yeah, so what I want to talk about now is the actual visual enhancements that I'm using. So I am using Jesus Rodriguez's visual enhancements, and I will put a link, I'll put a card to his channel now in the video and I will also put a link to his channel down in the description. He has done an amazing job. He has got some texture unlimited configs that make everything look really, really nice. I am not using those at the moment. And the only reason why I'm not using those is because I thought I was using those, but I didn't actually turn them on in the main screen. So that was a bit silly by me. But yeah, no, he has fixed RVE so that we finally get city lights again, which is glorious. I was starting at, well, 
In some of the later episodes of Kerbal Gets Real, some of the more recent ones, I have actually been using this pack, but it, it does look incredible. He has a link to all of the mods in one of his most recent videos. So I would definitely recommend going and checking that out because it is it's great. It's it's fantastic. It makes everything look really, really, really nice. And actually, I have also swapped over to 16K textures again which makes everything also look really good. I'm going to see if I can use 16K textures for the next series. We'll, we'll, we'll have to see. But there we go. We are at the moon anyway. So now it is just a quick burn to, well, get us into a low lunar orbit. That is what that TLI stage was designed for. I don't know why that Mechjeb thinks, well, not Mechjeb, on the right of the nav ball, it thinks that we're going to be using two stages. It doesn't anymore, but that, it's just a weird bug that sometimes happens, because I know we definitely had enough Delta V in that stage to actually capture us at the moon, but now we have captured, we're in a nice low lunar orbit, and I think what we are going to do is we are going to attempt to land in the Sea of Serenity. So it is time to actually slow ourselves down for our final descent to try and land a Falcon 9 on the moon you can see we are getting some weird flashes and that is probably a bug from using 1.10 and Scatter, I imagine, does that or the TUFX config that I'm using. Probably the TUFX config. It doesn't happen when I use Jesus Rodriguez's configs, so yeah, it's, it's probably that. But we are coming down now and let me tell you, this was really, really, really difficult. I had to perform a suicide burn to perfection to actually get this down because the Merlin, the Merlin 1D, the nine Merlin 1D engines on the first stage of the Falcon 9, they are throttleable. But because the moon's gravity is so low, that you don't really, <laughs> like even at minimum throttle, yeah, you're going to still go flying up. And unfortunately, we did manage to touch down safely. We did touch down safely, but I wanted to land like the Falcon 9 does on Of Course I Still Love You or, or the landing pad at Canaveral. I wanted it to land upright. So what I did was, well, we're going to go zooming back off over the surface of the moon. I'm surprised that nothing broke when I did that. because We were going like almost 300 meters per second by the time we actually lifted off. But yeah, so I wanted to launch again and see if we could try and kill our horizontal velocity and then flip ourselves up. Unfortunately, that didn't work because I didn't give us enough time. So the entire thing actually spun itself apart. Well, blew up. So what we did is we loaded a quick save and this happened. <laughs> I was trying to kill my horizontal velocity yet again. But unfortunately, that meant that we smashed straight into the translunar injection stage. So once again, we loaded another quick save and we tried it again. This time I used RCS to actually move us a little bit away from that stage before firing up the Falcon 9 first stage. And it worked this time. It actually worked this time. We didn't go smashing back into that stage. And we have pretty much managed to kill our horizontal speed completely. So now what I'm going to do is we are going to flip this up. We are going to deploy the landing legs and we are going to try a lot of times to actually land this on the surface. So I had to quick save and quick load a lot because to really fine tune that suicide burn to get us down safely on the surface. Well, it was it was split second timing. So this was our first attempt. And you can see we left it a little bit too late. So we are going to load up and I'm not going to show all of them. This is actually the attempt that did work. There we go. And we have cut and we are on the moon. So we managed to land a Falcon 9 on the moon. That is actually going to be the end of this video because that was what this video was all about. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, why not give it a like? If you've really enjoyed this video and want to keep up with the content on my channel, please do consider subscribing. I have been Karnasa and I will see you later.